Welcome to Will It Work? Hi, I'm Kevin. Uh, here we're going to go through my game consoles, see which ones work and which ones don't. So far I've done pretty good. I think I've only got out of like around 300 units so far. Uh, I've done about 120 or so and I've only found maybe four or five that are I would say unplayable. Uh, so, uh, you know, some don't work, but uh, due to age, etc., can be refurbed. Uh, there's a couple that are just um, maybe unplayable because they're, you know, in PAL or some other region of the United States. I keep those, of course. Um, but uh, for the most part, everything's worked, which, is, uh, which has been really cool. Uh, so... Today we're looking at the Bentley CompuVision. Uh, this is one of the first systems I ever bought when I decided that I was going to start collecting stuff. So I probably bought this in the 90s. Uh, it's just your simple wood grain 70s style Pong. Uh, at the time when I bought this, this was not difficult to find online. There were a lot of these being sold. Um, there are certain Pong systems, like the Atari ones for instance, that are very common. Now there are certain models of Atari that are more rare. But for the most part, Atari and the Sears Telegrams brand, which was also a uh, you know an Atari in a, in, in a different outfit, uh, those are very you know easy to find. And then there were a lot of mainstream ones that were probably found in other uh, major retailers at the time, like say Kmart, for instance, before it was owned by Sears. And you know they were like a competitor, a discount store, so you might have found. Uh, a different Pong there, or in a Woolworths when they were around, uh, etc. There were many department stores before we had all this, e our Amazon and eBay and things like that. So, uh, we've got the uh, tennis, soccer, squash, and solo handball. Very likely this is running on the same black and white microprocessor that we see in most of these, which is the AY3-8500. But, Sometimes we get surprised. They have the same four games, we put it in, and suddenly in color, different score system, <clears throat> extra graphics. It's happened a few times. Uh, but smaller ones like this, probably not. So this one does come in the box. It's a beat up. This one was licensed by Magnavox. And that would be Philips uh, in, you know, other parts of the world. And what's interesting about Philips is that they had a um, I believe they had the uh, Odyssey series Magnavox Odyssey, Philips Odyssey and uh, they had a whole line of uh, Pong systems uh, throughout the history of uh, the 70's so it's weird that they would license this like I don't, why? maybe this was before or something or maybe they just thought we can get in some extra action if we, we, rent the, we license this one out. I don't know. It, it's unusual. Let's go ahead and take it out. It's in the box. The box is pretty rough, but not too bad. Got worse boxes, that's for sure. I always got those boxes that look like an alligator. Took a bite out of it. A deluxe home TV video game system for the entire family. Bentley Industries, 1983. Wow, this is late. This is really late. I mean, this is like the Atari 2600 is done at this point. They've already come out with like the 78 or the 5200 and the ColecoVision and stuff. And they decided to release this Pong now. It also kind of explains why Magnavox did that because. They were also done with the Odyssey 2, I think, by 83. Unbelievable. Why would they release a Pong in 83? <laughs> I mean, I think, oddly, there was probably some nostalgia factor with Pong. It, it was around for a decade, basically. Uh, 72, you know, uh, and here we are at 83. And I think that for some people, that's what they enjoyed playing. Like my dad, when he was a uh, young man in like the military and, and stuff, and then going into the 60s and going maybe to the bar or whatever, late 60s is when Pong 
uh, in the arcade was around, I believe, uh, because he talked about it, and he talked about how, like, they would play the Rolling Stones and play a punk. I don't know how good his memory is, etc., but that's what he would tell us. And, um... So for him, though, that, that was a bit of... There's a bit of nostalgia to Pong, right? Whereas, like, regular video games, for him, there, you know, it just wasn't the same thing. He wasn't, like, playing Space Invaders in the arcade or Pac-Man or anything like that. That that all came later, you know? So a guy like that might be, like, still interested in purchasing a Pong, uh, at a Pong system, even as late as 83. But I would say it is a weird purchase. There were so many made in the 70s that if you really had some nostalgia, you probably would have went back and bought one at that time. All right, so let's get this foam out of here so we don't mess it up. We'll set this down. Tangle it. So we've got, uh, we've got separate hand controls. Actually, they feel, it's a, it, they look cheap. They don't feel particularly good, but it has a pretty fluid solid motion there which is nice there's some metal parts in there metal bolt and the screw and stuff so that adds to why it probably feels good uh, you know has a more natural feel so that feels appropriate and then we have uh, the four games a reset a ball angle ball speed player size and power I mean it takes a six volt so a six volt basically thinking about this in my head a six volt is usually not the ay3 8500 uh, most of the time when we see it uh, we get a uh, nine volt configuration but there are other Pong systems out there, and we have seen 6 volts before, and I tell you that some of the early Pong systems are basically identical, although you can kind of tell when there's differences. Put some batteries in this guy, and we will see together what we've got here. And, uh, we'll hook up. I notice there's no speaker, at least on the top. Which means it could be broadcasting sound through the uh, RF, which would also indicate that we've got a different chipset. Now, that has lit less to do, I guess, with the chipset and more to do with um, how they engineer it, how they want to push that sound through. Um, it looks like we've got it. We're using double A's here strong some of my double A's are but we'll put those in it looks a bit rusty now I do have adapters but let's try the corroded probably had some battery leak at some point let's see if we can get this to go this battery door is warped basically at one time it probably sat there like that but it's not working so well now and don't know if we have a uh, doesn't look like I see I don't see a channel switch anywhere So I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip it over to the video side once I get this working and we'll take a look at it together. If for some reason I cannot get it working, we'll come back here, talk a little bit about what it might be and uh, have some closing thoughts. Okay, here we go. <laughs> 